Welcome to our video on nanotechnology. This video is aimed at GCSE students. By the end of this video lesson, you should be able to explain the term nanoparticle and understand that nanoparticles have different properties from the same substance in bulk. You should also be able to describe the properties and uses of nanoscale particles of silver and titanium dioxide. So let's look at what we mean by nanotechnology. Nanotechnology is a term which describes the study and use of extremely small substances, often called nanoparticles. And a nanometer is 1 times 10 to the minus 9 meters, which means it's 0.000000001 meter, which is 1 millionth of a millimeter. To be classed as a nanoparticle, substances have to be in the size range of 1 to 100 nanometers in diameter. And if you look at the diagram, you will see that viruses are the only object listed in this diagram that would be classed as a nanometer because it falls in that range of 1 to 100 nanometers. What's really exciting about nanotechnology is that nanoparticles have different properties to the substance in its bulk state. So for example, if you take just a tiny speck of gold, that's made up of billions and billions of gold particles. And gold is quite unreactive and certainly doesn't have any catalytic properties. However, if you were to have just a small number of gold atoms and not billions of them, gold would suddenly have a different set of properties and nano gold is used as a catalyst and this is the key about nanotechnology it's the fact that nanoparticles have different properties to the substance in its bulk state so if you have only a small number of gold particles and not billions of them you've got a very tiny amount of gold and that is a nanoparticle which has different properties. So now let's look at some more examples. Nano silver has different properties to silver. For example, nano silver has antibacterial properties. It's got antiviral properties and antifungal properties. And therefore we can make use of this in products such as plasters, antiseptic sprays, deodorant, lining of fridges, socks. Very often you will find nano silver in the sheets in operating theatres or in the curtains. Just focusing on one of the uses, the use of nano silver in socks. The reason for nano silver in socks is because it kills a bacteria that makes your socks smell after exercise and it also kills the fungus that causes athlete's foot. Nano silver has lots of potential uses because of these properties, antibacterial, antiviral and antifungal properties. Sunscreen is another example where nanoparticles are being used. Nanotitanium dioxide is now used in sunscreen because it blocks out the harmful UV rays and the particles are so tiny and they don't reflect visible light, it means that the sunscreen cannot be seen on the skin. It's invisible. So that's just another application of where nanoparticles are being used in everyday life. It's also important to remember that titanium dioxide would not be able to have the same use. It's only nanotitanium dioxide that can be used to block out the UV light and is invisible on the skin. Titanium dioxide has been at the forefront of nanotechnology and nanotitanium dioxide is also found in self-cleaning glass. The glass is coated with the nano-sized particles of titanium dioxide and they speed up the breakdown of dirt in the presence of UV light and they also cause water to spread out into a thin film rather than just being droplets on the surface and the combined effect of the sunshine and the rainwater cleans the windows. So we've discussed some of the benefits of nanotechnology, 
by just looking at a few examples of where nanotechnology is being used. Now let's concentrate on some of the risks involving nanotechnology. Although nanomaterials that are currently in use have been tested so that they're not harmful to us or to the environment, we don't know their long-term effects. And therefore, that's one potential risk of using nanotechnology, the fact that their long-term effects are unknown. Another reason to be cautious when using nanotechnology is the fact that these particles are so tiny that there is a risk that they could be absorbed into the body. Especially when we're using products such as deodorants or sunscreen that are applied to the skin. Even though it's been shown that these uses are safe in the short term, there's no certainty that exposure over many years will not result in problems. We just don't know the long-term effects of using nanoparticles, and therefore scientists need to be cautious when moving forward with nanotechnology. So now we're going to test your understanding of nanotechnology and nanoparticles by giving you some exam questions. So what we want you to do is have a look at the exam questions that follow, pause the video, have a go at them, and then we're going to go through the answers together. So here's the first exam question. The first part of the question is asking to give the size range associated with nano-sized particles. The second part is asking you to state an important difference between nano-sized materials and the same material at a larger size. The third part is asking you to suggest a possible reason that some scientists are concerned about their use. And the last part is asking you to give an example where nanosilver is used to kill bacteria. So please pause the video and now have a go at this question. So now let's see how you got on with question one. So for the first part, the size range is 0 to 100 nanometers. For part two, the important difference between nano-sized materials and the same material at a larger size is the fact that nano-sized materials have different properties or new properties. For part three, the concern that scientists have with the use of these sun creams is the fact that the nanoparticles are so small, they can enter the body, they can be absorbed through the skin, and we just don't know the long-term effects. For part four, you could put down uses such as the linings of socks, plasters, deodorants, fridge linings, antiseptic sprays, any of the uses we've already discussed. Now let's look at question two. Have a look at the question and then pause the video and have a go at it. So the question is asking you what is meant by the term nanoparticle. It's asking you why nano-sized silver particles are used to cook the inner surfaces of fridges. And then it's asking you to explain why people are concerned about the presence of free nanoparticles in the atmosphere. So now let's go through the answers. So for the first part, what is a nanoparticle? Um, a nanoparticle is really a particle with a diameter of 1 to 100 nanometers. So if you said it's a substance with a diameter of 1 to 100 nanometers or particle with a diameter of 1 to 100 nanometers, you get the mark. For the second part, it's asking why nano-sized silver particles are used to coat the inner surfaces of fridges. Well, we'll accept for that kills bacteria and fungi. So if you said it's antibacterial or antifungal, that would get the mark for that. For the last part, state and explain reasons why some people are concerned about the presence of free nanoparticles in the atmosphere. Once again, it's this concern that they could be absorbed into the body and we don't know the long-term effects. So now it's important to recap our lesson objectives. After watching this video, you should now be able to explain the term nanoparticle and understand that nanoparticles have different properties from the same substances in bulk. You should also be able to describe the properties and uses of nanoscale particles of silver and titanium dioxide. So that concludes our video. Please check out our YouTube channel, Dr. Rowe Chemistry, and our Twitter site, which contains lots of chemistry information and links, at Radichemistry.